Hello, hello! Welcome to Vanna's Noshk Life. Originally, I was planning to do a bit different content today, and I was thinking to talk more about monthly expenses in Norway. And if you're still interested in monthly expenses in 2022 in Norway and how they changed from 2021, please write it in the comments so I can do a video on that topic. But for today, I think that we will go a bit different way. And since there is so much interest into transitioning to data jobs in Norway, that actually it's also important to talk how many applicants are there per positions like data analyst, data scientist, data engineer, and how to stand out uh, when you apply, how to make employers want you to be a part of their companies, if there is anything you can do to help employers to pay more attention to your CV than the other ones. So this is what I want to talk about in this video and I hope that it is very useful for you, both if you want to work remotely or on site. It should be relevant for anyone who is searching for the job. Of course, it will be more focused on data related jobs. So. Please don't forget that your likes, your comments and your subscription to this channel gives me a lot of energy and support, but even more important, it helps YouTube algorithms to understand that this video is useful and needs to be shared with more people. And let's start the vlog. When I started to scroll in through different positions in Norway, like data analyst, data scientist and data engineer, business intelligence uh, analyst, software engineers uh, and developers and so on, what I actually found, like with the focus on data jobs, I saw that quite often when I open data analyst position or a data scientist position, especially entry level, but even senior level, there is 50 plus applicants. So it means that imagine 50 plus people every time apply for same job together with you. So it is kind of not that huge chances of getting invited to the interview because usually only top two, three candidates are invited to the interview. So that sounds a bit uh, how to get to be invited, right? I bet that if you look on other countries, of course, the competition is much higher comparing to Norway. So maybe for some of you, when you hear like 50, 50 applicants, it sounds okay. But on the other side, still it's many people that are competing for the same position. That is not nice. But I found that actually data engineering is, uh, it looks like it's less attractive or it's less people who actually want to do data engineering job. But then I was still like thinking, okay, the competition, how to how to deal with the competition, how to make your CV or like you as a person to stand out. Of course, your education will matter. I will not lie. Yes, your education will matter. But there is much more things. First of all, it's the way how you present your information in the CV makes a huge difference. When you have this traditional CV that is very dry, where you write like a lot of words explaining what you are doing, I think it doesn't help employers to recognize you from the other applicants. What I would recommend instead is to think about making more emphasis in your CVs on the practical work that you did. Share more links to the GitHub, make sure that your GitHub is uh, organized, that you have their projects. It's better to present your experience on the projects and uh, what actually you did in, that, in those projects. I always, when I look on people who apply for positions and I see their CVs, I miss a GitHub account. I need to Google, I need to research more about the person because all this like dry list of this is my mastery, this is my bachelor, or like I did this and that, I want to see it. Like if you want to be a data analyst, share something, like make some dashboard and then include this dashboard as example, as your portfolio. Create practical portfolio, include it early in your CV, don't put it somewhere in the end. 
If you want to show some text tag, just make it practical, visual, and then include a link, and then here, here it is example, and blah, blah, blah. If you want to show how your code and how your code looks like, also do that. You can have in GitHub a very organized uh, folder that follows your CV. You can put the same thing on the LinkedIn and make it beautiful. So then when people look at your CV, they actually see your work and they see a practical examples of your work that could make it more attractive for them, right? To look at you and not at someone else and to invite you to talk uh, on the interview rather than someone else. So this is, I think it is a bit overlooked, but I felt that I really wanted to share this piece of information with you because it took me so much time to make my CV different from what I was used to. Of course, not always I was invited to the interview when I was searching for a job. Still, it helped me to get more interview invites and also i think that it help when you put it in such way you also can see what pieces you are missing when you are not getting invited to the interviews either there is a better candidate than you or maybe you need to work on something and then by working practically you're not just reading on going through the courses you're actually making some real stuff that you can show in your cv and get real experience to work on so then it will be much easier to go through the interview process if you don't have anything to show then of course the question why should someone hire you without any experience and so on even if you go through the courses you do some stuff you just need to learn how to present it uh, in a different way and don't ignore github and the power of github if you have some blogs on specific topic don't ignore this include them in your cv make a, make it very distinguished that this is what you write about because it can help and i hope that you will find a job of your dream someday and all of these tips that i shared now with you can help you in doing this thank you for watching today i hope you liked uh, this short video and see you next monday bye